welcome to all of you shiksha 360 and today basically we have to discuss chapter number 17 that is factoring and forfeiting part two clear factoring and forfeiting part two clear so in the previous session basically we have discussed regarding the factoring so in this session basically we have to now discuss regarding the forfeiting and uh, along with that basically we have to discuss some more important thing basically along with that basically we have to discuss of balance sheet items clear along with the forfeiting so let's start our discussion so first of all, that is forfeiting surfaces clear. So forfeiting surfaces clear. So there is a, <clears throat> please remember that basically factoring is mainly used in the domestic purpose clear. We know that basically there is also international factoring, but factoring is mainly used for the domestic surfaces. <clears throat> and forfeiting basically is used for the international purposes. So now let's start our discussion on the basis of that. <clears throat> so what is forfeiting? So forfeiting basically it is a means of finance. Clear? What is forfeiting? Basically it is a means of finance or a credit. An exporter of goods basically avails from an intermediary. Clear? Basically from an intermediary basically called the forfeiter against the export receivables. Clear? Basically against the export receivables. But without the obligation, clear, basically, but without the obligation, basically, to repay the credit, clear. But without the obligation, clear, basically, to repay the credit, clear, basically, but without the obligation, basically, to repay the credit, clear. So, what is the meaning of that, clear? So, what is the meaning of that, basically, what they are saying here? <clears throat> like, in the factory, basically, we have discussed two forms. First one is with the recourse. Second one is without recourse, clear, without recourse. That is basically in one, exporter is responsible for the payment, clear, basically exporter is responsible basically for the payment. In the case, clear, basically exporter is responsible basically for the payment. In which case, basically when the buyer will not give the payment, clear, basically when the buyer basically will not give the payment, in that case, Exporter is responsible, clear, to give the payment, clear. But here, there is nothing that such a rise is clear. But without the obligation, basically, to repay the credit, clear. So, forfeiting, basically, it is used for the international trade obligations, clear. International trade transactions, clear. Basically, forfeiting <coughs> is a use, clear. Basically, forfeiting, basically, it is used for international trade transactions. So, please tell fast now. It is clear, basically, what is the difference? Clear, mainly, please remember that forfeiting, basically, it is used for the international services. And under that, exporter has not any liability to pay to the forfeiting. Clear, in the case of the default, basically, they have not any liability, basically, to pay. So, in fact, basically, it is the discounting of the trade receivables. Clear. So, here, basically, one word, that is export receivables. So what is comes under the export receivable? So it can be either the bill of exchange or letter of credit or promissory notes, clear? So all these things basically is to be comes under the export receivable. So in fact, it is the discounting of trade receivables, such as drafts drawn under the letter of credit, bills of exchange, promissory notes or any other freely negotiable instruments on a no recourse basis clear on a no recourse basis that is without recourse to the exporter clear that is basically without recourse to the exporter in case the importer basically fails to pay on the due date clear without recourse to the exporter that is basically exporter is not paying clear that is exporter is not paying to the forfeiter <coughs> in case of default by the buyer so it is a highly flexible technique clear it is a highly flexible technique that allows an exporter basically to grant attractive credit terms to foreign buyers without sacrificing his cash flow and without the risk of possible late payments or default by the importer clear <coughs> so what is the meaning of that clear 
like in the case of the factoring clear there is one fear in the mind of the exporter that is basically they have to repay clear basically in the case of the default but here there is nothing such arises clear so it is a highly flexible technique clear just basically when the exporter export the goods clear exporter basically exports the goods to the buyer clear basically to the buyer at the same instance clear basically we can say that basically when they get the export receivables they will already in contact basically with the forfeiter <clears throat> to get the documents and give the payment clear and give the payment clear so basically we can say that they will get the payment or the spot clear basically just we are saying that in simple language basically they will get the payment on the spot and do the transaction clear and do the transaction clear <clears throat> That is basically there is not any problem that the business is going on credit. Clear it there is not any problem basically goes up that the business is going on credit. Okay. As basically in the simple language, we know that basically they have on credit sales. Clear basically there is credit sales. Clear that is basically they will receive the money after some time. Clear, but they will use the services of the forfeiter clear to get the payment on time and run his business well okay so this is the forfeiting <clears throat> simultaneously the exporter basically is fully protected against interest and or currency rates moving unfavorably basically during the credit period as the entire risk basically is passed on the forfeiter clear basically here basically there is not any risk on the side of the exporter because all the risk here basically will be taken by the forfeiter clear Simultaneously, the exporter is fully protected basically against interest and or currency rates moving unfavorably during the credit period as the entire risk clear is transferred or passed to the forfeiter. <coughs> so forfeiting in the nutshell, basically we can say that forfeiting is thus a highly effective sales tool which simultaneously improves cash flow and eliminates risk basically for the exporter clear as eliminates and eliminates basically risk for the exporter clear. So forfeiting is thus a highly effective sales tool, which is thus simultaneously approves the cash flow and eliminates risk for the importer clear and eliminates basically risk for the exporter. <clears throat> Some bankers basically defines forfeiting as a medium term capital goods financing clear. <coughs> so Some bankers basically define forfeiting basically as a medium term capital goods financing by means of selling a bill of exchange clear basically by means of selling a bill of exchange at a discount to a third party clear basically by means of selling a bill of exchange at a discount clear at a discount clear basically this is also at a discount <clears throat> who is the forfeiter clear who is the forfeiter like in the case of the factoring also clear basically they are also selling at the discount <clears throat> but in the case of the factory 80% payment basically it is to be done in the starting of the session and rest 20% basically after getting the payment basically from the buyer clear after getting the payment basically from the buyer now basically here basically we have to know basically how the payment basically will be credited clear how the payment basically will be credited now basically we have to know regarding that here <coughs> third party that is the forfeiter <coughs> Collects the payment basically from an essentially overseas customer through a collateral bank, thus assuming the underlying responsibility of exporters and simultaneously provide trade finance basically for the importers by converting a short term loan basically to a medium term. Clear basically by converting a short term loan basically to a medium one. Clear by converting a short term loan to a medium one. <clears throat> so just here basically it says that all the responsibilities. Now lies on the forfeiter. Clear all the responsibility now lies on the forfeiter. Clear. So now move further. So how the forfeiting process is to be going on? Clear. How the process is to be going on? So here the exporter. Clear. So here the exporter identifies his importer clear so here the exporter basically identifies his importer importer basically that is who
and signs with him a contract clear basically and signs with him a contract for sale of his goods clear so the exporter basically identifies his importer and signs with him a contract basically for sale of his goods at a price negotiated between them clear basically at a price negotiated between them giving the importer adequate credit period to pay for the imports clear basically giving the importer adequate credit clear basically giving the importer basically adequate credit to pay for the imports clear basically adequate credit period basically to pay for the imports <coughs> exporter basically will also inform the importer that the exporter would discount the sale the receivable so basically with the forfeit clear they also inform basically to the importer clear but that is basically they already received payment basically and they are using the services of the forfeiter and now you have to pay clear <coughs> clear and assigns the receivables basically to the forfeiter so the importer arranges basically with his banker for issue of a letter of credit basically in the favor of the exporter clear <coughs> so now basically the importer basically arranges basically with his banker basically for what basically for issue of a letter of credit in favor of his exporter so the exporter basically enters into a forfeiting contract with the forfeiter so then the actual export takes place clear so in the end basically then the actual exports takes place the debt instruments are drawn by the exporter clear and the debt instruments are drawn by the exporter accepted by the importer <coughs> that is buyer and will be backed by the unconditional standby letter of credit clear I think all of you are aware that basically stand by letter of credit. I will forward you the letter of credit session clear. After the session, basically, I will upload the session of letter of credit clear. So please go through that also clear. Stand by letter of credit clear. It is one of the type of the letter of credit. And that is basically it is equivalent to the guarantee. Clear so that debt instruments clear the debt instruments basically are drawn by the exporter clear the debt instruments basically are drawn by the exporter that is the seller accepted by the importer clear basically accepted by the importer that is the buyer and will be backed by the unconditional standby letter of credit clear and will be backed by the unconditional standby letter of credit of the importer's bank clear basically of whom basically of the importer's bank clear and will be backed by the unconditional standby letter of credit of the importer's bank. <coughs> Further, the forfeiter sends these documents basically to the importer's bank. Clear the forfeiter sends these documents basically to the importer banks, which in turn notify shift to the forfeiter. Clear basically, which in turn shifts, which in turn basically notifies or shift to the forfeiter. So please tell fast now. It is clear to all of you basically how the proper mechanism of the forfeiting going on. Clear. First of all, basically, there is a relation established basically between the exporter and the importer. And after that, exporter also inform the importer that the exporter basically will discount the sales receivable. Clear? That is basically they have done a dealing basically with the forfeiter basically for getting the payment on the time. Clear? So basically, on the basis of that, clear, basically, the forfeiter bought some guarantee. So basically, the importer here basically arranges basically with his banker. Clear? That is basically they want a letter of credit. Clear? in favor of the exporter clear that is basically in the <clears throat> and how why the bank basically will issue the letter of credit clear basically why the bank basically will issue the letter of credit basically on the basis of the guarantee clear on the basis of the guarantee clear basically in case the borrower defaults clear or basically the opener that is basically the buyer clear in case the buyer defaults so basically they will get the payment on time clear so they will get the payment on time. <clears throat> okay, so please tell fast if you have any doubt, any query regarding that. Hope it is clear to all of you now basically what is the difference between the factoring and forfeiting also. Definitely you will get two questions basically from this topic. Now move to the next one. So further. The forfeiter makes payment to the exporter that is 100% of the value of the exports. Clear? Like in the case of factor, clear? This is also 0.5 mark question. Clear? How about payment? Clear? So here basically 100% payment. The forfeiter basically makes payment to the exporter that is 100% of the value of exports after deducting his discount. Clear? After deducting his discount and other incidental charges. Clear? As per the contract. Clear? 
after deducting his discount and other incidental charges basically as per the contract clear so in exchange for the payment clear basically in exchange for the payment the forfeiter does that takes clear basically in exchange for the payment the forfeiter then takes over responsibility basically for claiming the debt basically from the importer clear so in exchange basically for the payment the forfeiter clear in exchange basically for the payment the forfeiter basically then takes over responsibility clear the forfeiter basically then takes over responsibility for claiming the debt basically from the importer clear basically for claiming the debt basically from the importer so the forfeiter basically either holds the notes till full maturity as an investment or sells them to another investor on a non recourse basis clear <clears throat> clear either basically forfeiter holds that receivable or basically they will further send to any other third party clear so the forfeiter basically either holds the notes basically till full maturity or sells them to another investor on a non recourse basis clear on a non recourse basis so the holder of the notes holder of the notes basically does present each receivable clear the holder of the notes basically then present each receivable basically to the bank at which they are payable clear basically at which they are payable as they fall due clear as they fall due so the letter of credit clear does not have to be transferable or confirmed by the advising bank in the exporter's country clear but it must be subject to the ucpdc rules clear but it must be subject to the ucpdc and the international chamber of commerce clear ucp <coughs> of the international chamber of commerce clear so they have to follow the guidelines clear basically there is one type of letter of credit that is transferable or confirmed clear so the letter of credit does not have to be transferable or confirmed by the advising bank clear by the advising bank clear so basically please leave this points like there is advising bank <coughs> reimbursing bank clear all these things basically you have to understand basically when we will go through the session of the letter of credit clear i will post the session clear there is total one hour video clear on the letter of credit i will post two sessions on that clear so i request to all of you please go through that in detail history <clears throat> notes or bill of exchange or drafts are actually the most commonly forfeited debt instruments clear so basically which are most usually debt instruments either promissory notes or fee notes or bill of exchange or drafts <clears throat> are actually the most commonly forfeited debt instruments so under a forfeiting agreement clear basically under a forfeiting agreement a promissory note or a bill of exchange <clears throat> clear under a forfeiting agreement a promissory note or a bill of exchange is issued for each installment clear basically it is issued basically for each installment of the supplier's credit clear basically it is issued basically for each installment clear basically it is issued basically for each installment basically of the supplier's credit thus documenting clear thus documenting the existence of a claim clear thus documenting the existence of a claim of the exporter on the importer clear so thus documenting the existence of a claim basically of the exporter clear that is basically exporter is claiming on the export ex importer clear that is totally abstract clear that is totally abstract that is it is unconditional irrevocable and divorced from the underlying trade transaction clear that is unconditional clear that is this much amount basically you have to get clear this much amount basically you have to get clear irrevocable clear there is nothing any changes basically you have to done now clear because the business transaction is going to be completed clear <coughs> clear so it is unconditional irrevocable and divorced basically from the underlying trade transaction clear from the underlying trade transaction <laughs> that is to basically mechanism of the forfeiting clear mechanism of the forfeiting clear so till now basically what is the meaning of the forfeiting services and what is the mechanism clear <coughs> now what are the documents clear so normally the documents basically required by the forfeiter from the exporter basically will be as follows clear so what are the documents here first one is copy of supply contract clear basically copy of supply contract or of its payment terms clear basically copy of supply contract or of its payment terms clear second one is letter of credit or guarantee clear basically letter of credit or guarantee which is the forfeiter's preferred 
फॉर्म ऑफ सिक्योरिटी ऑफ पेमेंट क्लियर सो लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट और गारंटी बेसिकली विच इज द फॉर फेटर क्लियर लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट और गारंटी बेसिकली विच इज द फॉर फेटर प्रेफर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ सिक्योरिटी ऑफ पेमेंट ऑफ अ बिल और नोट क्लियर बेसिकली ऑफ अ बिल और नोट फॉर एल सी और गारंटी टू बी एक्सेप्टेबल क्लियर बेसिकली फॉर एल सी और गारंटी बेसिकली टू बी एक्सेप्टेबल द इशुइंग बैंक बेसिकली मस्ट बी इंटरनेशनली रेप्यूटेटेड क्लियर फॉर एल सी और गारंटी बेसिकली टू बी एक्सेप्टेबल द इशुइंग बैंक मस्ट बी क्लियर द इशुइंग बैंक बेसिकली मस्ट बी इंटरनेशनली रेप्यूटेटेड क्लियर सो द बैंक बेसिकली हु इज गोइंग टू इशू एल सी और गारंटी क्लियर दैट मस्ट बी internationally reputed and credit worthy clear and credit worthy clear so sometime basically issuing bank it is regarding to which that is basically it is the bank who is opening the lc clear basically who is going to opening the lc or that is basically we can say that applicant bank clear applicant bank clear basically for a lc or guarantee basically to be acceptable the issuing bank basically must be internationally reputed and credit worthy clear and credit worthy and the most important point basically to remember that is that any lc or guarantee basically should be irrevocable clear because there are sometimes basically these are to be revocable clear that is basically later on basically we can do some changes but here they are specially mentioned clear that any lc or guarantee basically should be irrevocable unconditionable clear that is it should be are irrevocable unconditionable divisible and assignable clear divisible and assignable third one that is copy of signed commercial invoice clear copy of signed commercial invoice fourth one is copy of the shipping documents clear copy of the shipping documents include certificate of shipped railway bill airway bill bill of lading or equivalent documents clear copy of shipping documents include certificate of receipts railway bill airway bill bill of lading or equivalent documents clear letter of assignment and notification to the grantor clear basically letter of assignment and notification to the grantor clear so all these things basically are these are the documents clear these are the documents basically that is required by the forfeiter clear that is required by the forfeiter basically from whom basically from the exporter clear that is required by the forfeiter basically from the exporter <laughs> so next one basically which we have to discuss basically what are the advantages clear basically what are the advantages of the forfeiting clear so basically forfeiting basically provides a flexible creative alternative clear so it is a alternative clear basically provides a flexible creative alternative basically to the traditional international trade clear basically creative alternative basically to what basically to the traditional international trade financing methods and is particularly useful clear and is particularly useful basically for the transaction with the buyers in the developing nations clear please remember that forfeiting basically mainly used for the international purpose so what are the advantages clear so now basically we have to discuss basically what are the advantages of forfeiting first one is forfeiting basically provides this is most important advantage that is 100% financing clear basically forfeiting basically provides 100% financing that is basically without recourse and not occupying exports credit line exporters credit line clear so this is to say once the exporter basically expo obtains the finance fund he will be expand, exempted basically from the responsibility to repay the debt clear to repay the debt clear that is basically in the default from the buyer basically they have not any liability basically to repay the debt clear second one forfeiting basically improves cash flow of the exporter by converting the receivables clear that is by converting the credit sales into cash clear basically with the help of the forfeiter clear so forfeiting basically improves the cash flow clear basically forfeiting basically improves the cash flow of the exporter by converting the receivables clear basically by converting the receivables basically into current cash inflow clear by converting the receivables basically into current cash inflow and it is beneficial clear further basically and it is beneficial to the exporter clear and it is basically beneficial basically to the exporter to improve his liquidity clear and it is beneficial basically to the exporter to improve his liquidity and his ability clear basically to improve his liquidity and his ability to improve further the fund raising capability clear to improve his liquidity and his ability to improve further the fund raising capability clear to improve further the fund raising capability 
थर्ड वन फॉरफेटिंग सेव्स क्लियर बेसिकली फॉरफेटिंग सेव्स एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कॉस्ट क्लियर बेसिकली फॉरफेटिंग सेव्स एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कॉस्ट बाय यूजिंग फॉरफेटिंग क्लियर बेसिकली बाय यूजिंग फॉरफेटिंग दैट इज द एक्सपोर्टर विल बी फ्रीड फ्रॉम द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द सेवेबल्स द रेलेटिव कॉस्ट एज अ रिजल्ट बेसिकली विल बी रिड्यूस्ड ग्रेटली क्लियर द रेलेटिव कॉस्ट बेसिकली एज अ रिजल्ट बेसिकली विल बी रिड्यूस्ड ग्रेटली so this is the overall discussion of the forfeiting clear basically this is the overall discussion of the forfeiting clear now basically next basically we have to move towards the off balance sheet items clear so in the examination basically just simple thing basically they will ask in the examination basically what we have to include clear basically what we have to include under the off balance sheet items clear basically off balance sheet items so off balance sheet items basically are those items in the books of a bank which are not mentioned clear basically in the balance sheet of the bank clear basically as the name says that basically off balance sheet item basically it means that which are not mentioned in the balance sheet of the bank clear so basically off balance sheet items basically are those items in the books of the bank basically which are not mentioned in the balance sheet of the bank so these items basically are not assets or liabilities clear if they are not mentioned in the balance sheet of the bank so basically either they will not either in the asset or on the liability clear so these items basically are not assets or liabilities to be reported basically in the balance sheet clear so these items are not assets or liabilities to be reported in the balance sheet as on the date of balance sheet but may get converted clear basically but presently basically they are not part of any asset or liability clear but in the upcoming time clear basically but may get converted into the asset or the liability at a later date depending on the happening of a certain event clear basically but may will get converted into the asset or liability clear basically but but may will get basically converted into the asset or liability basically on the particular date clear on a certain event clear so these items are contingent clear basically these items are contingent upon certain breach of commitments and are also called as a contingent liabilities clear so basically these items are contingent upon certain breach of the commitments basically and also called as the contingent liabilities so these contingent liabilities basically has to be disclosed as notes to the balance sheet clear so basically these contingent liabilities basically how they are represented basically has to be disclosed as the notes to the balance sheet but once these commitments crystallize clear basically crystallize so basically they will be part of the balance sheet clear but once these commitments crystallize clear basically when but once these commitments basically crystallize so they also become the part of the assets or liabilities clear so they also become the part of the assets or liabilities of the bank and have to be shown in the balance sheet clear and have to be shown basically in the balance sheet clear so now let's discuss basically so direct example like basically here to further basically we have to discuss that so direct credit substitutes clear so what we have to include under the off balance sheet items first one is direct credit substitutes example general guarantees of indebtedness including standby letter of credits serving as a financial guarantee basically for loans and securities and acceptance is clear basically and acceptance is basically it include endorsements basically with the character of a acceptance clear basically and acceptance is what is the meaning of that basically includes endorsements clear basically it includes endorsements with the character of acceptance clear basically it includes endorsements basically with the character of acceptance second one certain transaction related contingent items clear basically certain transaction related contingent items basically that is performance bonds <coughs> bid bonds warranties and standby letter of credits related to the particular transaction third one is basically short term self liquidating trade related contingencies clear short term self liquidating basically trade related contingency such as documentary credits clear basically documentary credits collateralized that is securitized basically by the underlying shipment clear <coughs> collateralized basically that is securitized basically by the underlying shipments fourth one that is sales and repurchase agreement and asset sale basically with the recourse clear basically with the recourse when the credit risk remains with the bank clear so sales and purchase agreements repurchase agreements and asset sale basically with the recourse basically where the credit risk remains with the bank or forward asset purchase forward deposits 
and partially paid shares and securities basically which represent commitments basically with certain drawdown note issuing facilities and revolving underwriting facilities aggregate outstanding foreign exchange contracts take out finance basically in the books of taking over institution clear so what is that take out finance clear so take out finance basically in the books of taking over institution clear i will provide you a short video on the take out finance clear here due to the lack of time basically i am not able to discuss completely so just you have to remember that basically take out finance that is in the books of taking over institution basically it is divided into three unconditional take out finance conditional take out finance this is very very important clear basically this three and non funded exposure basically to the commercial real estate clear and third one that is non funded exposure basically to the commercial real estate clear so all these comes basically under the take out finance next one that is grant is basically issued on behalf of stock brokers and market makers clear grant is issued basically on behalf of stock brokers and market makers next one that is basically commitment to provide liquidity facility clear next one that is basically commitment to provide liquidity facility for securitization of standard asset transactions clear commitment to provide liquidity facility for securitization of standard asset transaction foreign exchange open position open position in the gold and last one that is fra and irs they are very very important for the examination point of view clear this point is very very important clear so which points are important i will discuss in detail all these points clear so forward rate agreement that is fra irs basically interest rate swap clear so in the examination sometimes they will directly ask point five more question basically what is the full form of the fra clear basically what is the full form of the fra so please remember that that is forward rate agreement clear that is forward rate agreement clear so in this session basically we have to discuss up to this much point hope it is clear to all of you basically what we have discussed just you have to remember that basically balance of balance sheet items basically are those items basically which are not included or which are not mentioned basically in the balance sheet of the bank clear in the balance sheet of the bank clear so i will provide you all the details basically regarding the grantees different types of the grantees letter of credit clear i will post the special sessions basically in the group clear recorded session in the group basically for the understanding purpose clear all these things basically are to be included under the off balance sheet items clear like letter of credit grantees clear different types of the grantees and very very important basically for the examination point of view all these things clear so i request to all of you please go through that and thanks to all of you for joining this session